So let's give it up for Rebecca Watson. Hello. Oh, my, my voice magically worked. That was amazing. <laughs> thank you, sound person. Uh, thank you, Skepticon. Oh, hello, Skepticon. I missed you. <laughs> I missed you. Um, I'm glad you all made it back from the church burnings or wherever you were during that last hour. <laughs> following Greta's talk. <laughs> I don't know about you, I just wanted to go rip the throat out of an evangelical. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what came over me. Uh, she is a hard act to follow, so I hope you all had a terrible dinner, because that's an easier act <laughs> to follow. Uh, no, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. You're always a great crowd. and. Um, Last year I had such a blast and I heard from a lot of you saying that you had fun too. Um, for those of you who weren't here, I spoke about Christmas. Um, I, <laughs> I, I think I made the Yule Lads uh, <laughs> superstars in the skeptic movement. <laughs> um, and I talked about how uh, lying to your children uh, is okay because it's fun. <laughs> I wanted, before I get into my talk today, uh, I wanted to give you a quick update on last year's talk. Uh, in addition to talking about uh, door sniffer and pot liquor and the rest of the Yule Lads, um, everybody who wasn't here last year, what? <laughs> uh, in addition to all that, I talked a bit about the war on Christmas uh, that, that Christians enjoy engaging in uh, every, every year this time. And I showed a preview of a film called Christmas with a Capital C. And, and in, the, in the trailer, uh, you've got this evil atheist Scrooge who moves back to his small Alaska town and runs for mayor in the hopes of outlawing Christmas. So that's basically what the trailer made it out to be. So I was really excited to see this film. And uh, a, a few weeks ago, someone tweeted to me that it was on Netflix Watch Instantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I immediately grabbed the popcorn <laughs> and sat down and watched it. And what I saw blew me away, and I had to come share it with you. Um, <laughs> because what I, I was actually, I was so excited about this. I was seriously considering for my talk just like showing the movie <laughs> and doing like my own sort of uh, you know riff tracks over the top of it. <laughs> but I was blown away because it the trailer was misleading. I know, I know. Slightly disappointing and yet at the same time a little exciting because what the movie was actually about was uh, a grumpy atheist, <laughs> not evil, um, moves back. And, and, and the thing we made fun of in the trailer was that the good guy, the Christian, who was trying to display a manger scene on the, the town property, um, he came across like such a jackass <laughs> in the trailer. But the thing is, he comes across like a jackass in the movie, and he's meant to be. I, I wasn't sure at first. I'm watching it, and I'm like, this character is awful. Like, and I'm pretty sure I don't hate him just because I'm an atheist. I'm pretty sure that a lot of Christians would hate him, too. Um, and, and at the end, uh, I'm going to, spoiler alert, sorry, uh, if you want. Um, but at the end, uh, what, what happens is um, it's a, sort of like a pro-separation of church and state message. Uh, a judge comes, I, I'm not making this up, I swear. <laughs> Uh, a judge comes to the town and explains politely to the idiot Christian. <laughs> uh, she's like, well, you know, you have to be more inclusive. So you can add other religious ornaments. You can uh, sell the, the property to an individual who can display them. Um, or you can have no displays at all. And he's like, well, I don't know. That's terrible. And the guy's wife is like, shut up. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, the guy's wife also thinks he's a jerk. <laughs> And in the end, uh, he's, he, as the town's mayor, uh, sells the, uh, the manger scene to himself and his brother, and they get permission to display it on public property. And so, like, they, everybody, it's like sort of everybody wins. And the message that I, I 
sort of thought they were trying to get across to Christians was that it's okay to celebrate Christmas in your own way without having to foist it upon everyone, um, which is a great message, right? Um, but I wasn't sure. I'm like, maybe I'm completely misinterpreting this. So I found the director on Facebook. <laughs> I love the internet. Uh, his name's Helmut Schleppi. And uh, I found him on Facebook. I sent him a message and I said, hey, can I call you? And he responded. He's like, yeah, sure. So, <laughs> so I called him. And we got along famously. <laughs> um, it turns out he's Danish. And I asked him, I'm like, well, let me just ask, are you Christian? And he said, well, I'm spiritual, but I don't really believe in churches and stuff. I'm not into all that. And I'm like, really? <laughs> And through the course of our conversation, which I did record and I will put on Skeptic next week, uh, with his permission, with his permission, uh, I learned that Helmut thought that this, the idea of displaying religious iconography on, on public land was some sort of fable. Like, <laughs> because, because he comes from Holland. And... And in Holland, you don't do that. <laughs> so he literally thought this was a fairy tale <laughs> throughout the course of making the film. <laughs> and then he tells me, he's like, you know, I checked out your site, Skeptic. I said, really? He's like, yeah, I love it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then we talked about Ayan Hirsi Ali and how inspiring she is. And it was really a cool conversation. And he liked me so much that he put me in touch with a screenwriter. So I talked to the screenwriter, too. I called her up the next day. And uh, I pointed out that the movie was based on a, a song by a Christian band. And the lyrics are basically like, screw you, it's Merry Christmas, not Happy Holidays, F off, you know. Uh, but more Christian, I don't know, whatever. Uh, and so I asked her, I'm like, this is weird, because you know that's not really what the message of the movie ended up being. And she's like, OK, off the record. <laughs> So I probably shouldn't be saying this, I guess. <laughs> you filming this? <laughs> I'll, all right, I'll tell you in the nicest way I can think so she doesn't lose her job or anything. Because um, she's, yeah. The, the, the company, the production company, makes Christian films. The, the band had this huge hit with that song, lots of hits on YouTube. Uh, and they said, we can make more money out of this. And so they didn't, this is, these are not her words, these are my words. Um, so they went to her and said, could you write us a movie based on this song? And she listened to the song and she was like, eh. <laughs> and she decided to turn it on its head. She was obviously a Christian, but a very liberal Christian who believes in separation of church and state. She's like, so yeah, the first thing I did was I looked up what the actual laws are. And you know, that's why it's about a manger scene, because that's a really clear-cut law. You can't display that on town property. Um, so she's in favor of separation of church and state. So they're both awesome, and I recommend you watch the film. It might not be the greatest movie you've ever seen, <laughs> but it actually has a good message. And uh, because of the terrible trailer, uh, it was marketed to people who probably don't believe in separation of church and state, who then got a message that is <laughs> awesome, right? Yeah, I thought you guys would like that update. So, um, so this is my third year at Skepticon. I decided that uh, I would do this like uh, the Star Wars films where every other one is depressing. <laughs> the last three are just the worst. <laughs> so the next, the next three talks I give are just going to be terrible. Um, so yeah, last year was a fun one on Christmas. And this year, I'm going to be talking about something a little um, angrier. <laughs> um, this is a, an actual quote from the Speaker of the House. Uh, I think it's important that we understand that what we want to do here is win the war, not just win a battle. And there will be an opportunity sometime in order to win the big war. And we're looking for that opportunity. So here's a little quiz for you guys. I want you to tell me, what are the Republicans fighting? What is their war? Actual wars? No. Unemployment? <laughs> Drugs. <laughs> uh, what about the war on Christmas? <laughs> Not what this quote is actually about. This quote is actually about your uterus. <laughs> or your friend's uterus. Someone's 
all uteruses. <laughs> this is an actual, um, <laughs> this is an actual, an actual recall <laughs> of a plush ovary and uh, ovaries and uh, like the the problem was the ovaries. The ovaries could pop off and choke children. <laughs> So this uterus is actually hazardous to kids, <laughs> much like my own, probably. <laughs> so yes, they are fighting a war on, on uteruses. That's why this talk is called The Religious Right versus Every Woman on Earth. <laughs> and before, before I go further, I want to I wanna tell you that every time I talk about things like this, uh, for instance, on the SGU podcast or elsewhere, um, when it's on the SGU podcast, someone will inevitably write in and tell the guys to please uh, stop me from politicizing skepticism. Um, to which my answer is always <laughs> the same. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I talk about what I want. And uh, this has been a conversation that's been going on in our community about what you can and cannot be skeptical of. And uh, I just want to tell you briefly to not listen to the people who tell you you can't be skeptical of religion, of politics, of economics. These things are important and they deserve it. Um, skepticism is a tool set and we can apply it to anything. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to apply it to the religious right. Um, so this is, uh, this is an actual quote and this is why I have no problem politicizing skepticism. Because people who are running for president say things like this, an arrogant, corrupt Washington elite declared war on marriage, on families, on fertility, and on faith. That's you guys. You guys are the corrupt Washington elite. Uh, yeah. But notice, notice that. I mean, fertility? And, did you even know you were waging a war on fertility? Um, this is the woman who... This is a woman who actually told the world that getting uh, vaccinated for HPV would cause mental retardation because some woman told her once. <laughs> um, Michelle Bachman even did this recently. She, she had to apologize for that uh, because there's no scientific evidence that the HPV vaccine has any negative, uh, causes any harm. But um, she apologized and then just the other day, there was a brand new quote from her about how the vaccine ravages a young girl's body, which is just, it's telling. Um, because HPV, uh, the religious right believes that it will lead you to have more, uh, the HPV vaccine will lead you to have more sex because now you don't have to worry about cancer. That's what was holding us all back. <laughs> I'd like to, sweetie, but <laughs> in several decades I might die of cancer. That's why Michelle Bachman is also against fire extinguishers, because they'll just encourage everybody to set shit on fire. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I noticed there were a few children in the audience, uh, and I do occasionally curse, I apologize. Um, I think the only other word is asshole, so <laughs> uh, I'll try to keep it to a minimum. Um, Sometimes I can't control myself. So let's talk about briefly what is the religious right. It's important to define your terms. Um, I'm going by this definition, a collection of individuals and organizations who are devoted to establishing biblical, biblical Christian doctrine using governmental action. Uh, an easier way to say this <laughs> is with this helpful... <laughs> These guys. Uh, and if your children can read it, I say they're old enough to know the word. Right? So, uh, so they want to establish biblical doctrine. What, are, what, what is biblical doctrine? Well, often at, at, at conferences like this, we do talk about one specific uh, piece of doctrine they try to establish, <laughs> which is the idea that Jesus rode dinosaurs through the Garden of Eden, um, a.k.a. creationism. Uh, that's something we talk about a lot, so I won't spend any time on it. Um, instead, I'll talk about this other bit of biblical doctrine. <laughs> uh, 
uh, which is basically that your sex life is uh, their concern. Um, I'll break that down. A uh, few key points here. Number one, women are for making babies. Uh, women who have sex should be punished. Punished with babies. <laughs> or cancer, <laughs> whichever. Whichever. Uh, it's, the Bible makes no bones about it. It's right there in the very first book. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth and pain. You shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. There it is, all together in one neat package. Uh, that is what is driving the religious rights war on women. So let me talk about a few of the organizations that make up the religious right. Um, Alliance Defense Fund is one, uh, founded by Alan Sears, who wrote The Homosexual Agenda, um, which, I swear to God, uh, Alan Sears posited that uh, SpongeBob makes you gay. <laughs> I think we're all a little gayer now, <laughs> having seen that. Uh, the Alliance Defense Fund holds Pulpit Freedom Sundays, where they encourage uh, people to, uh, to, to preach to their um, congregations and to uh, ask them to vote for a certain um, representative, which is always the religious right. Um, it's, that's unconstitutional. They're basically waiting for somebody to sue so they can come to their defense and hopefully establish a law that allows uh, preachers to stump for candidates. Um, Concerned Women for America, uh, which was founded by Tim LaHaye, and his wife. <laughs> uh, although three of the five highest paid positions at CWA are held by men, but they are very concerned. They're very concerned. Um, uh, the, uh, Tim LaHaye and, and the other leaders of CWA um, attacked public schools in the 1980s for promoting secular humanism. Um, and on their website, they have uh, six core issues uh, opposition to same-sex marriage, promoting vouchers and other forms of tax aid to religious schools, opposition to pornography, religious liberty issues, and national sovereignty, um, and opposition to legal abortion. Uh, so it's right there in their, their, their top things to worry about. Um, focus on the family. Uh, you could have been doing that the whole time, really. <laughs> But yes, they are particularly egregious. That is, of course, James Dobson, uh, who once attacked the Girl Scouts for promoting humanism and radical feminism. <laughs> He's all, peddle your lesbian cookies elsewhere, Jezebel. <laughs> uh, Dobson's wife is the head of the National Day of Prayer Task Force which is a thing that still exists in 2011 for some reason. Um, he, he also frequently issues endorsements for political candidates, uh, but he started Focus on the Family Action uh, as a way, like as a, as a little group that he could apparently have the legal right to stump for candidates. Um, so yeah, he's, he's pretty awful. Um, so these people have a lot of money. Do they have a lot of power? Yes unfortunately. Uh, you might have remembered earlier this year there was a big uh, to-do about the federal government defunding Planned Parenthood and the entire government nearly shut down because of it. Um, it's interesting because when you look at the statistics, uh, most people in the U.S. did not want uh, Planned Parenthood to be defunded. The majority of people, including Republicans, including conservatives, um, didn't want it to be defunded. Uh, Planned Parenthood, uh, the, the whole idea was that Planned Parenthood provides abortions and we shouldn't have any federal funds going to abortions. Of course, no federal funds ever do go to abortions. That's already been made illegal. And also, 3% of Planned Parenthood's activities are abortion related. Everything else is family planning, cancer screenings, things like that. Um, I would cry too, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So despite that, you know, this very small group managed to nearly shut down the government uh, over something that the majority of Americans did not want. So yes, these people are unfortunately very powerful. Um, so let's talk quickly about what their agenda is. Uh, there's a few key points. One is instituting abstinence-only education. 
preventing access to contraception, and making all abortion illegal. Don't those three things just go together so well? <laughs> it's like one naturally follows from the other. Um, and so I'm going to quickly go through these, all three of these, because there are actually some, uh, it's not just the religious right who agrees with these points. Uh, there are even some atheists, some uh, secular people who think that these are good ideas. So I'm going to quickly go through um, a few points, not all of them, uh, but a few points on why they are not good ideas. One, abstinence-only education. Uh, there, has been, there have been studies done, study after study after study after study that shows it does not work. Um, this is one from 2005 that found, although federal support of abstinence-only programs has grown since 1996, existing evaluations of such programs either do not meet standards for scientific evaluation or lack evidence of efficacy in delaying initiation of sexual intercourse. Um, here is another one from the CDC that found that in states where they teach abstinence-only education, uh, you are way more likely to get pregnant than in states that teach comprehensive sex ed. Um, absolutely every single scientific study ever done shows us that absence-only education <laughs> does not work. It's just natural. <laughs> it's the look in their eyes that gets me. Uh, uh, so, I'll move on quickly to denying contraception. Why is that so bad? Well, uh, contraception is basically, basically required for women to have any kind of equality in our society. Um, because when you don't give women contraception, uh, they drop out of school to get pregnant. Uh, there's a severe social stigma when they get pregnant young. Um, you have raised maternal mortality rates. Women actually die when you don't give them contraception. And there's an increase in unsafe and illegal abortions. Um, and, you know, this is something that affects men too, there's an increase in STDs uh, when you don't teach people how to use condoms. So uh, it's extremely dangerous to deny contraception. Uh, and yet, this is actually happening. It's happening in the U.S. and it's happening in Europe. I'll talk a little bit more about it uh, in a bit. But uh, there are laws that the religious right is attempting to pass that will give pharmacists and doctors the ability to uh, deny women contraception because it's against their religion. Finally, the idea of outlawing abortion, uh, which is always a fun subject to dive into at a conference. This is from The Onion. This is not a real abortion flex. <laughs> My favorite part is the adoption center <laughs> for pets. <laughs> I'm not sure how easy it is. There's a, there's a chapel, there's a daycare center, a food court, the largest rock climbing wall in Kansas. <laughs> Conservatives pass this around saying, oh my God, look at what they're doing. Love it. Love it, love it. So, uh, here's the deal about abortion. Um, an embryo is a clump of cells uh, which should not possess the same rights as an adult human. Um, one of these, uh, the first part of that sentence is a scientific statement, the second part is a, a moral and ethical statement that you might not agree with. Um, I'll talk about the ethics first. You can assign the same rights uh, to anything you want. Uh, it could be to animals, it could be to plants, um, it could be to uh, a human egg, which is actually even unfertilized, is quite an amazing little organism. Um, I choose not to. Um, so if you choose to assign, you know, uh, the same values uh, to a little clump of cells as to an adult human, there's not much I can do uh, to, to convince you otherwise, but I'll, I'll try. Um, <laughs> uh, just a few facts. 80% uh, of all U.S. abortions are performed within the first 10 weeks of pregnancy. Uh, that's before the embryo is even an inch long, and you shouldn't even be calling it a fetus at that point. It is still an embryo. Um, of course, to the religious right, it's a baby. Um, but it is, in fact, just an embryo. Uh, also, 66% of all fertilized eggs fail to implant or later spontaneously abort. That's a low number. It's very difficult to figure out exactly how high that number is, but uh, the, uh, the, the tests that have been done show anywhere from 66 up to 80% uh, of all fertilized eggs fail to implant or spontaneously abort. Uh, and 31% of all implanted eggs later miscarry. So if we're looking at the numbers, uh, 
humans tend to... No? Too far? Too far? Too far? Uh, according to the Guttmacher Institute, humans terminate, uh, well, I should say Americans, uh, terminate about 22% of, of their pregnancies. Uh, but yeah, God, God is just wiping them out. <laughs> so so uh, nature doesn't have much respect for that clump of cells, and I don't think we should have that much respect for it either. But again, that's, a, that's an ethical thing that maybe uh, you, you decide differently. That's fine. Uh, I'll go on to tell you some more about the science. Um, because there are a lot of lies that uh, the, the anti-choice uh, crowd will make. Um, one is that abortion causes depression. It does not. Uh, fetuses feel pain at 20 weeks. Uh, science is out, but says probably not. Uh, abortions cause breast cancer. No, that does not happen. Uh, and that outlawing abortion saves lives, which again, no, it doesn't. Uh, the uh, the World Health Organization and the Guttmacher Institute carried out this uh, really amazing study that showed that when you ban or uh, reduce uh, the ability for women to get abortions, um, women still have abortions at the same rate. They just have unsafe and illegal abortions, which leads to more women dying. So banning abortion does not actually save babies. Babies will still die, and now the women die too. So it's really, that's one of the reasons why I never use the term pro-life, because to me, if you are uh, advocating for the banning of abortion, you are actually pro-death. <laughs> that's what you're going for. Uh, more women die. So as I'm sure you know, despite the fact that we have the science on our side, that does not mean that we are winning. Um, now, I, I, I first gave a similar talk to this back in May, and I was going to update it with more things that the religious right has done, um, but the talk would have gone on for like three hours. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what happened in the first quarter of this year. Um, by March of 2011, 49 U.S. state legislatures introduced 916 measures restricting reproductive rights. Only one state did not, and that was because that state hadn't met yet. <laughs> that state legislature, legislature had not met. Um, so uh, here's a few things that have passed thus far. I'm going to try to breeze through these. It's very small font because I had to fit a lot in, um, unfortunately. Uh, in South Dakota, uh, women uh, have to wait 72 hours before getting an abortion and obtain counseling from a registered anti-choice pregnancy center. Uh, at the time that that bill was approved, there were no, uh, no one had signed up to be on the list of approved uh, anti-choice pregnancy centers. And the reason why is because by not signing up, women had no place to go. The list was empty. They had to go to a place on a list before they could get an abortion. They, were, they effectively outlawed abortion. Um, luckily, uh, those laws have been tied up in the courts since then. Um, Indiana cut all federal funding for family planning and banned abortions after 20 weeks. Remember the lie about how pain starts to be felt at 20 weeks? Well, they're using that. They're using that to pass these in state legislatures, uh, saying that that's when fetuses feel pain, so that's when they should be, abortions should be banned. It's unconstitutional, uh, but they've been passing them anyway. Uh, Indiana's not the only state. In Utah, any hospital employee can refuse to participate in any way in an abortion, and also abortion limitations are placed on private health plans. Uh, that's been a thing that's been happening in states all over the place, um, limiting uh, private health plans' ability to cover your abortion. Um, and also, uh, this is, goes back to what I mentioned earlier about pharmacists and doctors being able to opt out of offering women contraception. They can also opt out of abortions, uh, even when it's an abortion that would save the mother's life. Not my religion, so go elsewhere. Um, in Mississippi, all schools must provide abstinence-only education or else get state approval to discuss contraception. In Arizona, this is my favorite, I think, women must state publicly that they're not aborting because of racism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Arizona. You remember Arizona. <laughs> Where they can stop brown people and ask for their papers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, women must stay public. They have to sign a form that says they're not aborting the, the, the fetus because of racism. And 
If the doctor can't produce the form, he has to keep it on file. If he can't produce the form when asked, he goes to jail. Uh, in Texas, family planning budget was slashed while protecting funding for anti-choice centers. And women, uh, the bill said, women had to get a sonogram at least 24 hours before having an abortion. Um, if she didn't want to look at the results of the sonogram, uh, it had to be described for her in detail. Which, you know, at like nine weeks, it's like, well, there's a little peanut thing. <laughs> Might be a head, I don't know. Um, and in case, this is slightly graphic, I apologize, but um, you know, in case you think that a sonogram is like the jelly on the belly with the paddles, um, it's not. A sonogram, in this case, requires insertion of a device. Um, so imagine you've been raped and you got pregnant and now you have to have a doctor use this device on you, whether you want it or not. Um, luckily, uh, your, your friend and mine, um, where is he? Oh, did I take his ugly mug? I think I took his face off because it was so gross. Um, <laughs> I, t I, had, I had a big picture of Rick Perry and I was like, no, I'm not gonna. It would have just gotten more booze. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's been, luckily it's been uh, tied up and it got, I believe that one got shot down. So uh, people fought back and won. Oh wait, his face is coming up, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> um, but the interesting thing about what they did uh, to Planned Parenthood, you know, they did the exact same thing that you saw happen at the national level. They said that, you know, we don't want any of our money going to pay for abortions. You remember that 3% that none of the money goes to pay for anyway. Um, so they cut the family planning budget and uh, what it did was cost the state of Texas millions of dollars. Um, so despite the fact that they're, they've now lost a ton of money uh, and it was based on lies, um, Rick Perry managed to do it. So there's his mug. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that nobody's selling rotten fruit out in the hallway. <laughs> so uh, you might... Uh, remember that the name of this talk is The Religious Right Versus Every Woman on Earth. Um, that's because no one is safe, unfortunately. Um, it's it spread, uh, and it, it has spread from us, unfortunately. Uh, this is something that happened uh, just a couple of months ago. Nadine Dorries is an MP in England who is uh, in favor of abstinence-only education. Uh, the bill that she actually managed to get introduced and which passed its first stage, I think it has since been shot down because it is ridiculous, but the bill said that schools had to teach abs abstinence-only education to girls, not the boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, like, could they say any clearer, like, we just hate women. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, teaching the girls to keep their, their slutty knees closed is uh, <laughs> apparently the way to do it. Uh, Nadine Dorries is a part of this thing called the Conservative Christian Fellowship, which is uh, a, a marriage of politicians and uh, clergy, which is exactly like what we've got here with the religious right. Um, so they've been doing it as well. Uh, re recall earlier the thing about pharmacists being able to turn women away. Uh, there was uh, a bill introduced in the UK that passed uh, that allows pharmacists to opt out over beliefs. So you're in a rural area, you need plan B, say. You go to the local pharmacist and he says, no, I don't believe in this, um, so you're out of luck. Uh, there doesn't need to be, for instance, another pharmacy nearby that's open and serving uh, plan B. You're just out of luck. Um, and it's not just in the UK, there was one passed uh, through the EU. And uh, same exact thing, um, except for that the bill, uh, the bill that was originally introduced in the EU, this is interesting, the bill was introduced in order to um, protect women who go to this pharmacist and he turns her away. The bill would have said that in order to turn her away, you must have another pharmacist working who can give her the medication she needs, uh, or there has to be another pharmacy within 10 miles or so that is uh, able to offer her uh, what she needs. Um, so that was what was introduced. And what ended up passing was the exact opposite. <laughs> 
It just said, you know what? Anybody can refuse to give a woman any kind of medication because of uh, that person's religious belief. Um, the reason why it passed that like that is because of lobbyists. In this case, one of the major groups was the European Center for Law and Justice, which doesn't sound awful on its surface. Um, it's actually uh, a part of the American Center for Law and Justice, which also, so far, you're like, that doesn't sound so bad. Um, until you learn, a, you learn <laughs> that it's run by this guy. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, that is Pat Robertson, your friend and mine. <laughs> Did you think it was Satan? I don't know why you would have gotten that idea. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, say, say, I'm sorry, uh, Pat Robertson <laughs> runs the ACLJ. Uh, that's a $12 million a year uh, organization. Uh, you might know him best from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Um, which you might be mistaken in thinking is just some kooky cable access thing that no one watches. Um, they actually have nearly $300 million in their budget, um, and they have an intense amount of pool uh, amongst conservative Christians. Uh, they can have politicians on that, that can speak directly to this religious right audience. Um, he also has some other organizations. He has a lot. Christian Coalition uh, is... is struggling, actually, luckily, with 1.3 million is all. Um, and then there's Operation Blessing, which is um, a $400 million operation that got in trouble uh, a little while ago for, they were supposed to be um, shipping goods to uh, developing nations by plane, and what, what was discovered was that they were actually carrying diamonds back <laughs> on the planes <laughs> illegally, yeah. So, um, so basically, uh, you know, we've screwed over Europe <laughs> is, is the theme there. So, you know, I know that that's all really, really depressing. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, and I promise that next year I will come back <laughs> with a very fun thing about Jar Jar Binks or something. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> racism. <laughs> um, so I, I, I just want to I want to end by encouraging you all um, that it's not too late. You know, um, we managed to uh, people in Texas managed to stop that sonogram bill from going into law. Um, in in Mississippi, they had that huge personhood uh, amendment that was shot down. Um, it's possible to win. We just need to pay attention to what's happening. Um, and what's happening is uh, these groups are, are introducing legislation at the federal level. It gets shot down. And then all of the state legislatures introduce their bill. They know it's going to fail at the federal level. And they know nobody's watching at the state level. So I don't know about you, but I have trouble remembering who my state representatives are. Um, I want you to, if you don't know, I want you to go home and look it up, and I want you to call them. <laughs> because they need to know that this rich minority of people uh, should, not be judge should, not, should not be telling them how to vote, what bills to introduce. They need to know that you're out there watching, and that you want separation of church and state, and that you want them to stop beating up on women. Um, so there, there are a lot of things you can do. Um, you can go to Skeptic. Uh, we, we blog about issues like this, and we often have ways that you can get involved by signing petitions and, and, and things like that. Um, there are also a lot of other organizations that are working on things like this. Um, Americans United for Separation of Church and State. Um, a lot of the organizations that are here, um, CFI and SSA, and uh, I've got Freedom From Religion Foundation up there. Um, Feminist groups are working on this stuff, um, like Equality Now, PATH. Uh, the ACLU, of course, is being on the separation of church and state thing. Um, contact your favorite group that's working for separation of church and state and ask them if they're helping out with this. Because I feel like a lot of times uh, we see action in terms of uh, preventing creationism from getting taught in schools, which is very important to do. Um, or, or things like, you know, getting in God we trust off the money, things like that. Um, women's health is very important, too. And I, for one, would love to see more secular organizations uh, fighting for women's health. Um, <laughs> uh, 
And, and also, I, I, I threw in Pandagon. I swear it was up there before I noticed Amanda Marcotte in the audience. <laughs> um, but check out her site. It's amazing. That pretty much everything she does is amazing. And if you have more questions about any of this stuff, you probably shouldn't talk to me because she knows way more than me. <laughs> so you should just corner her. Um, and, and finally, I just want to end by, uh, by once again telling you that Probably the most important thing you can do is to not listen to people who tell you what you can and cannot use your skepticism for. Um, because there are, there are issues that are important to you that might not be important to someone else, but you should fight for them. Um, so th I think the number one thing you can do is, is just to not shut up about this stuff. Um, so that's all I've got. Thank you very much. Everyone.